Do you hear that sound? I imagine that to be the sound of the Holy Spirit. At many a church service, he's waiting. He's tapping his fingers on some hard surface. He's not being given a sliver or a wedge to speak into the gathering of the people who say that they worship and follow Jesus and that they are delighted at the indwelling of the Spirit and the arrival of the Spirit in their gatherings. Well, he arrives, the Spirit does, but he's not given time or place to manifest himself and his will through the people assembled. And I mean all the people. I mean those who occupy all of the pews. I mean the ones who are pillars, who are at the back with probably some administrative thing to do during the service. I mean the praise people up front. I mean the pastor. I mean the associate pastors. I mean the wives of those pastors who are in the pews praying that the service will be meaningful and uplifting, that the people will be changed. But the Spirit keeps making this tapping sound. I have seen this in gatherings, the professional flow, seamless, without break, without opportunity for anything to issue forth from the people in the assembly only the professionals up front and they do it so well and the music is so finely tuned and enthusiastic and the message comes along after the appropriate scripture reading and after the gathering of the uh, grace of giving the celebratory offering to the works of the church the sermon comes forward all the right words are spoken they might even be a lot of words having to do with a need a need a pressing need for spiritual understanding not just head knowledge of those gospels but rather life imparted soaked into the people from directly from jesus christ as the um, sap flows through the true vine described in john chapter 15. And there's trimming that goes on with that vine. There is cutting, there is removal of error and waste and distraction and uh, dissipation. But the Spirit doesn't have a chance to operate in and amongst the people. So all this talk about Pentecost is either bogus, presumptuous, or premature. I have a book uh, which I produced back in 2018, In the Gathering, Joyful Upward Looks Together. I gave it to some pastors and they graciously smiled, said thanks, put it away in their drawer and probably considered that what it suggested was unworkable. Well, what is suggested is a, a, a pressing, serious need in the gatherings for that holy hush. When people just stop the yapping of their jaws, when the professional staff do the same thing, and in the silence, things happen. Ministry happens. Utterance happens. Prophecy and guidance may happen. A sense that God is there a sense that Jesus lovingly and in an approachable fashion is walking the aisles in the midst of those people perhaps a word of testimony perhaps a short piece of scripture that has changed the direction of a life recently and that life is compelled to speak it out to the others and friends there's no opportunity for that kind of thing it's just very sad I'll read you one poem. It's called As Children. Oh, could we just gather as children without all the pretense and bluff 
prepared for transparent and humble, then could we assemble enough? Then could we chance miss the one hurting, or order a service quite strained, without time for comfort and listening, without hope for Holy Ghost reign? Yes, we must obey whispered leadings that come from the portals above and open the place to new ministering, exciting surprises in love. Lord, may that happen for many of the churches that I have known, the people, the shepherds that I have known. May the Holy Spirit have ways and means to exercise a real dialogue, a real dialogue between shepherd and sheep. Amen.